Hi, welcome to Oracular Mechanics. My name is Alan. I'm glad you're here. Today, I'm doing my initial impressions of the Tarot of the Abyss. This is a brand new U.S. Games Edition deck by Anna Torian, one of my favorite Tarot and Oracle artists. If you want to see what I think of this deck, stick around. We'll take a look. Anna Turian is the author and creator of the Oracle of Echoes, one of my very favorite Oracle decks. When I first started following the Tarot Tube, this was a deck that I saw over and over again and I decided to have to get. I'm not going to do a walkthrough, but you can kind of see how worn the box is on this deck. I love this artwork. A couple months ago, Anna Turian uh, released, released the Bloodstone and Earthflesh Tarot which I missed out on to my great regret. But now recently, her Tarot of the Abyss has come out by US Games. A couple of days ago, I was watching a video by Tarot Shelf and she did a flip through it and I commented about how it looked like it's a great deck, but I was on the fence because there were a couple of cards I really liked, but a couple of cards that gave me pause. She then comments like she'd heard that before and she was questioning like, so which cards were they? And I thought that was a really good question. So, after watching Lisa Papez and Peggy you know, in what their, their new series, uh, Say Yes to the Deck, where they're getting their uh, viewers on, which is a great, uh, they basically, someone, they passed this by, but looking at it, I thought, yes, this is something that I want to add to my collection. So I've got it, I've unboxed it. I've taken just a quick look through the cards just so I can kind of get, gather my thoughts. Mm -hmm. Whenever I do a bonding with a deck, one thing I will do is I will make piles. So I think that's how this video is going to go. Cards I like, cards that are fine, and cards that I don't like as much. There are very rarely cards I don't like. And if there's a card that I don't like, there are a couple of reasons why. Either I just, the art isn't, isn't what I like, it doesn't fit what I think the keyword for the card is, or even deeper, is there something that is challenging me about the card that I need to consider? So that's kind of what we're going to do with this thing. Um, so I want to show off the deck. The deck box is great. I love the coloring of the deck. It is um, it's not quite black and white. It's kind of black and cream colored, which is really a little bit more supple and a little bit not quite as stark as a black and white deck. Specifically here, I'm thinking about the Spirit Keepers Edition 1 that I have and also the Hermetic Tarot also put out by the US Games. Great little chunky guidebook which I think after kind of my initial impressions of this deck, I'm going to have to get into because I think there's going to be some secrets in here that's going to make me like the deck a little bit more. But I want to start off first. I, the backs, they're fine. They're a little um, on the busy side and they seem, they're giving me kind of a 70s vibe for some weird reason, which I don't know why. Um, and also, if I look really closely, there is a US Games um, copyright, but it's in a weird little clover on both sides so it is reversible and it isn't necessarily a big deal. Um, what I do is when I look at a brand new deck I create two piles. One cards I like, cards that are fine, and cards that I'm not crazy about. So what you'll do is you'll kind of see me making those uh, distinctions as I go through the deck. So the first card is the Fool because you know zero, it's Fool. I like this card I think especially with you see a lot of the wind elements in it it really gives an air, a sense of the elemental air so I like this card, um, but for the most part, I'm not blown away by it. So it's a good card. It's not a great. So it's not a great card. So it's going to go in the middle pile for. It's fine. The magician. One thing I really like about this is the darkness to it. I love the magician as a trickster, but also kind of as a magician. And there's definitely a sense of druidic kind of sorcery to this card um, with trees. There's a lot going on with trees in this deck which I think may be covered, I'm hoping it's covered in the guidebook, so that's one I think I'll talk about. I need to read it and to show the issues. But for the most part, again, this is a fairly, it's a serviceable card. Okay, the High Priestess, which is also one of, one of the, the High Priestess is one of those cards that I really want to resonate with in a deck because I really feel that the High Priestess representing the intuition and the inner knowledge and the seeking is one of those cards that's really a pathway into the deck as a whole. And so this one, again, is serviceable. There's something about the yin yang symbol that is throwing me off because for me, there isn't necessarily a balance in the high priestess. I mean, in the high priestess, there is a sense that she walks, sits in the doorway, but she is just more feminine. She is more water. And so I don't, I don't think she 
she tends more one way than the other. So again, a serviceable card, but not amazing. The Empress, again, this is one of, one of my cards that I, I really like. And this is good, pretty pretty standard. Um, got a lot of dynamic energy, so that's good, I don't like it. The Emperor is the box image of the Tarot of the Abyss. So, not a surprise, so a card that I guess everyone kind of tend to like, so there it is. Again, so so right now I've got a lot of cards kind of falling in the middle. Um, the first card that is, is not going to land in the middle is the Wise One. And as a numerological five who really who I really resonate with Pope and Hierophant energy um, and that card, um, because one of the things that I want to do in my tarot practice is to bring people into the fold, to be an initiator, for people to explore their spiritual selves, to explore their spiritual past, to ask questions so that they can move on. And the idea of a shaman kind of having a circle here is not antithetical to that idea, but but when you change the card, it, 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 is, a, it is a hiccup to me. So when you rename cards, it has to be for a really good reason, and I really want to resonate with it. And this is one I just don't resonate with it. So this is going to go into the not crazy about pile. Again, the lovers. There is something, there's something going on with this card that's unique, and it is intriguing to me, because um, I'm we're we're gonna go we're gonna go hard on this video, and so I'm just gonna tell you kind of what I really think. So with the two trees intertwined, I had a kind of a double phallic kind of deal with it, which I'm like, okay. Um, but then also the, the way that they make the image, it looks very vaginal, which is also kind of really neat. So there's something, there's something to that and the idea of love and that physical interaction that is going on with this deck. Um, and I need to sit with it a little bit. So I'm going to put this in the I'm not crazy about pile. But this may switch because there is something, the more I look at, the more I explore, I think there is something more about love that is being said underneath the initial image that I need to set with. Okay. Now, when Tarot Shelf said, hey, what card do you not like? The Chariot was initially the first one that came to mind. I follow the Golden Dawn system of correspondences. And so, the chariot is Cancer, which is a water sign. And so, but this card clearly shows an air image with a woman flying on the back of geese. Now, initially the Rider Waite symbol, also it does, is it overwhelmingly water? But this seems overwhelmingly air, and so this is just a little bit of throw off for me. Also, for some reason, it's this deck is fantastical. There's that there is the element. But this one's just a little bit, it pulls me a little bit out of the deck. In the reading, so I, so this is great. Yeah, the first card that is going to go in the I love a father is this strength card, which is just fierce. Um, the defiance and the look of the woman, the strength, and the danger you see in the lion is just on point. In that, the fact is that they are in it together, and they are a combo that is going to you don't want to piss off. So this is Gregor. I love this card. Cool. Next, I really love this Hermit card. I just came out of a Hermit year and a Wheel Year year. And so this has a sense of wildness, a sense of investigating your own spiritual truth and in owning it. And the fact that she's holding a snake is both attractive and dangerous. And you know, and think, oh, she's this crazy old woman, but she knows what she's doing. So this card, this is hermit energy, y'all. Yeah. Okay. And so, like I said, I am in a wheel of fortune here, and I am not crazy about this wheel of fortune card. It doesn't have a wheel in it. I see what they're going to with this kind of energy, and the observation of the woman to, to the card and and the wheel energy. Um, but it just it doesn't really connect, so this is gonna go in this pile. Okay, I love this justice card. And so one thing I'm just, uh, initial uh, so the close up images like the strength, and this one really really connect. Um, but one thing that is just I'm gonna kind of zoom in here if you can see is the scales in the eyeball are amazing. 
Um, and I and, it, and it's the idea that you know they all say justice is blind, but here you have a justice that all she does is see through the balance of the scales and what is fair and what is right, and um, and she is she's not having any nonsense, and I like it. I like this card a lot. Okay. I understand what's going on in this hanged man card, but no, this, but no. Okay, one, there's not a hanged man, and I just, I just want to turn this card over. But, and I, and I, and I get that this card is a bit like the spacious star, that you're looking from the perspective of someone who is inverted. And when you see that, you get, when you go like, oh, okay. You know, and then you have the birds kind of flying around and that the fence, you know, the sense that I've been the carrion that they're waiting for you to die. And as you confront that idea that you're suspended, powerless, and you have to surrender to it, is your death imminent and is the carrion circling above your head? All that I get. It's just, I, I don't know what it is, but I'm not crazy about it. So I love the idea. I'm not, I, I'm not crazy about the execution. Okay, death. Yeah, no, I mean, there, there's not, there, again, a lot of tree imagery going on here. There's just, I, I, maybe I need to sit with it, but I don't know what is going on all in this here. I mean, it looks like stars and stuff like that. And death is portal, I just, it's it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not hit for me. Okay, temperance. Again, I see what's going on and I get it and I like it. But every time I use this deck and every reading that this card comes up and I'm gonna have to stop myself and go, nope, not the Two of Cups. And I know you're with it. So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go with serviceable, but I know that that's gonna be a deal. The Devil card, I like it. I like that it's got the constriction. Um, I like a scary devil. Um, I also kind of like the bound angel kind of deal too, which is going on. So this is a unique one. It's going to give me something to think about, but I'm not 100% sold on it. So, and um, I'm, gonna, I'm hashtag spoiler. The resemblance to the Eight of Swords coming up is, and I believe, intentional and interesting, but it makes this card not as uh, unique and um, on point as I'd like it to be because there's basically like two cards. Okay, the Tower. Oh no, I spilled. Okay, it's a Tower card. Yes. Yes, we are back to the yes pile. Um, Cause again, I think this is the back, one of the background images, the house and the people falling out of it. This is just, yes, 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 yes. So let's take a look at, uh, where? I think, maybe not, yeah, I'm looking at the box. Uh, strength is there, I've there seen. Um, no, 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 okay. Star, again, um, I like it. Um, so, so this is serviceable. The spoon, um, a little different. Um, a little kind of mysterious and dark and um, a little not traditional, but I like it and so I'm gonna go with the serviceable because I think it's gonna teach me something as we, as we go through. The sun, yeah, I, I like. This is a bright and shiny sun. So it's gonna go to yes. Um, and no naked baby riding a horse. So that's good. Okay. Now, awakening for judgment. And I'm a little bit biased because I literally just got finished watching a video of Anthony talking about things she didn't like index and she really mentioned renaming the judgment card. I'm like, oh yeah, I don't like that either. Uh, but I don't necessarily think that's always the case because I think like I said, if you're going to rename it, it has to make sense. And Awakening does make sense for um, Judgment as one of the meanings, but also as someone who has learned the thought system and the Aeon idea and and Judgment as the last judgment in the fact that there is a sense that there's more going on than the individual realization, but more of a communal or generational or societal awakening. Um, it's going on there too. So this is serviceable, but um, but I, I, it's longer. Okay. And the world. Um, 
I don't get this card. Um, I, the Ouroboros kind of, I get that as all encompassing. So this is one of the cards I'll have to look at the book and see if there's some inside that goes, oh, okay, I can get that, get behind it. But just an initial, uh, initial impression, I'm like, no. Okay, a suit of swords are first. Get Ace of Swords. It's fine. Two of Swords is yes. Yes, yes. So I was like, that lady don't have no face. Um, but then, but it's about the mask that you wear when you're in indecision. And I like that, that, that there's a decision that she's making and deciding what to do also means kind of depending on deciding what mask you're going to put on. Um, because as adults in a trying times, we have to wear masks and pants. So yes. Okay. Now, full stop. With this deck, there are two extra cards, um, and they are they are unique extra cards to a deck. Because normally, if you're going to get extra cards, normally there's an addition to the deck, or um, if you're going to have alternates, you're going to do the something in the major account. Because I think that's that's you know let's put your put your money where your mouth is. But here it's, um, they're both in the suit of swords. And so I'm gonna show them both together, both these two together. The three of swords has two different cards. Right, yeah, okay. I both like both of these cards and I both, I'm not crazy about both of these cards. So we're taking one at a time. So this first one is first, is a lady. Um, what is great about this is there's a sense of heartache and loss because there's a hole in her chest where the bird was, which is weird, but I get. So, um, it's not it's not three swords on a heart. So so that's a plus. Um, so that's really interesting. I like that it's, that's a woman that you kind of see in more of the picture. So serviceable. Now, this three, uh, sorry, is very 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 unique in my impression. The three swords are in a book and. The, Swords are about intellect and thoughts and communication. So books and swords go together naturally in my head. There is something very disturbing about the fact that this man has no brain. Because it has been hollowed out of his skull. But yet, strange, it, I, you think he's alive. Um, and all these birds are coming out of it. That are becoming letters. And the swords are punching the book and the letters coming out. Something's going on here. Uh, I, I want to know, and I think there's something ingenious, but it the, he has no brain, and that that might be a, that might be a no. So I'm putting them in the in the serviceable right now. Um, I will choose one or the other because I'm not going to keep two three swords cards. But, but I don't know which one will be best. I like where she's going there, but okay, four swords. Um, interesting take on it. So I'm gonna go with yes. I like it. Um, on rest or relaxation or recuperation because the swords are put away and there's no one there. Um, I am sadistically a fan of the Five of Swords card here. Um, it looks like he's got a bug or a fairy creature in a jar. And while that is not something you should do, it's very Five of Swords energy to do that very thing. So it really makes sense to me. So I like it. Six of Swords. Okay, Six of Swords for me, um, as I've said in other videos, you have to make a choice of how you're gonna do the Six of Swords. Are you gonna do Rider weight moving on? Or are you gonna do Thoth, um, Lord of Earned Success? Which is the Golden Dawn title for the card in both the Rider weight system and in the Thoth system. But the way that Pixie, Pixie did the art for the Six of Swords um, has, has, has since changed that into to a different traveling kind of card. So this is obviously, you got kind of a traveling situation. I like the bird for the air element. So, let's go. Starts well. This, um, the Seven of Swords is on the money. It is sneaky. It is backstabby it is creepy it is lone wolf that you get in all the seven of swords cards so i like it okay i talked a little bit about the devil and the eight of swords cards 
see the binding together. This is a very typical Eight of Swords kind of feel. And I like the idea of what the devil did with constriction and um, being feeling trapped, which I think is also part of the devil card. But the fact that these cards are so similar, um, I think detracts from both of them. So serviceable because it's standard, but not great. Um, I love me a tormented nine of swords. I just do this. This, this works for me. Okay. okay. Again, and then the other card that has two is the ten of swords, and I, there. I have a clear favorite in these, and I'll, I'll give you a minute to see if you can guess and see if you're right. Okay. My favorite is this one, so I'm going to talk about it first. I like the Ten of Swords cards that gives us a different perspective and a different sense of what is going on. And I love this idea of seeing someone in that Ten of Swords moment being observed by someone else who was not in such a tense sort of moment. And that sense is, what do you do? What do we do as people when we find someone who are in a state of total depravity, not depravity, despair and loss and ruin? How do we help? Do we Are we equipped and do we know how to help? Um, this is also has a very sense of the Good Samaritan story. Like, do we pass by the other side or do we intervene and do we help the people? Um, because I think we have to give people who get the Ten of Swords a sense of hope. Um, and even so, if I were pulling this for someone and they got the Ten of Swords to represent their situation, the question then becomes is, who is around who can help you? Who are your allies? Who is your support system? Where can you get the help? So I love this card, so this is good. Now this card, not bad, different, and I'll, and I'll applaud different. This is the idea of confronting the knowledge or the intellectual reality of what's going on. And the Ten of Swords it ten, does tend to be more of intellectual or uh, mental anguish and ruin than it necessarily is, you know, hey, you're actually stabbed by Ten Swords, uh, where you feel hopeless. And this is, in a sense, confronting it um, kind of face to face, um, which is which is interesting. So I'm putting the serviceable. Uh, this this will be the one that stays in the deck that I use, uh, but but I like this and I and I applaud this effort too because I think it's really good. Okay, page of swords. Um, we're gonna kind of flip through these. Um, okay. Um, one thing that's um, interesting about the sword suit, and I need to look at, is the page sword. The page of swords, knight of swords, queen of swords, all look to kind of be the same woman. So I need to see if there's something, if there's a story there. But yep, yeah, they're all serviceable. They're good. Um, I also like this Queen of Swords too because there is more of a sword maiden feel to it than um, Iron Throne woman kind of feeling. And then the King of Swords. I'm not sitting on the throne, but on a pedestal. Um, so it's good. It works. Okay. Next is the Wand Suit. Again, this is, um, like I said, there is some fantasy element elements to this deck. So I think here you see the Phoenix um, with it. So a fire suit, which is good. I like it. Um, I also like people on my aces, just because it gives me a connection for it too. I love this two of, two of wands because you really see the other side of the image and the, and the person who is looking out to um, the future and the enterprise so this is good, I like it. Uh, three of Wands, pretty standard RWS image, so here's the words. I, I am a fan of the Four of Wands as a birthday and not normally a wedding, which I normally picture. And just someone enjoying the birthday cake out of. That's good. This uh, Five of Wands um, is pretty standard. I think I've seen the image of birds fighting for the Five of Wands. Again, um, so it's good. Because it gives the sense that it's not, it's a conflict, and but it's not, you know, super uber serious. Um, I, I like this almost modern take on the Six of Wands as, as applause of the crowd for the ballerina who's taking her, her, you know, her curtsy at the end of her performance, which is, which is really good. Okay, this Seven of Wands, 
Um, it's probably one of the cards I look at the longest when I was kind of doing my initial kind of look through so I can get ready for the video. There's something going on with this perspective that almost makes me think Gulliver's travel. Um, you know, it's like, is it fighting a giant? And if you're fighting a giant, then I'm on the side of the people who are looking up at the guy with the sword. Right, sword? Yeah. Or wand, yeah. Um, as opposed to normal, I kind of, I'm always a fan of the underdog. And so the one who is facing the overwhelming odds. But here the giant becomes the overwhelming odds and not the other six wands. So it's an interesting take. So I'm going to go with good. Eight of wands. Um, again, a little more airy for a fire suit. But birds traveling, is, is, I, I like it for the Lord of Swiftness. I like this um, Nine of Wands, really, really kind of standard, but you really kind of get more of a defense and be down idea to it, so it's good. So yes, again, pretty standard uh, King of Swords. I, I mean, hi, this is the Ten of Swords. Hi, 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 how's it going? This is the Ten of Wands, the Lord of um, Burden. So it's good. I like I like the face. I like the head on, like the stare, he's staring you in the eye. You know, it's like he knows what he's got and he's doing it. He's making it happen. And page ones, pretty standard. So that works. I like this nine of ones, and there's something going on there with the conjuring. It seems like he's either called the fairies or the sprites. Um, but it's good. Okay. Queen of Wands, it's good, I like it. There's a the magical sense to it. Again, it's fancy. Um, no cat. That's one thing to look at. It's like, there's a cat or not? No cat. All right. King of Wands, pretty good. Again, a kind of very druidic kind of feel for it. All right. Okay, so basically the minor, um, the minor can have, have kind of worked. Um, this Ace of Cups, though, cover your ears. I'm, I'm, I'm about to ruin this card for some of y'all. And I feel, I feel bad for that. Um, am I the only one that sees a penis? I don't know. No, no. No. All the way up. Okay, Two of Cups, pretty standard. Like it. Three of Cups. Yes. Again, this is where more you're on the inside of the card, so it's really good. I like it. Four of Cups. Yeah. It's nice. Oh, wait. I'm moving that. That goes over here. And that goes there. Five of Cups. Yeah. Despair. Sadness. Turmoil. Six of Cups. Lord of Pleasure. Really? This is Remembrance, so that's fine. I, I can go with that. I love, love, love the Seven of Swords with your head in the clouds and imagining. Because for me, the Seven of uh, Cups is about choosing potential futures and, and thinking things through and, things, and confronting the possibilities. And having your head in the clouds is a great way of doing that. <laughs> yeah. Love, love. This eight of cups, fierce, moving on, giving up, dumping it out, and not going back. Nine of cups, yeah, that's good. Good, fat and happy, enjoying the pleasures of life. Yep, ten of cups, yep, this is good too. I love, again, perspective here with sales this card, so it's really good. Page, um, okay. Night, yeah, okay. Not quite as romantic as I'd like to see, but it's good. Queen of Cups. I want to, I, I'm just, we're gonna do this real fast. I want to feel like there's like a joint image going on here. There is, there is. Okay, so looking at the cards, there is, um, I thought there was connection between all of them and there's really not. But when you look at the page and the knight of the cubs, 
I mean, I've used my personal vision just too much of the cosmic. So, of course, I think all cards should go together. Because that's just... Because I... So I've been using my cosmic vision and my personal vision way too much. So I think all cards should go together. And so, when I saw this, it's like, there's obviously a connection here that you can see. There isn't an overlap in the fact that, like, his foot in the night should be seen in this image. Unless I go the other way. Maybe. Yeah. And so, I just, I just think that's... There. And so it's just it's it's really cool. So that's a hidden touch. So these both now become great cards. Um, and the uh, King and Queen of Cups are fine. I thought they went together. I like the still scene. Uh, I guess I want I want to know what's going on with this tentacle. I do. I do. So so I also went back through and then looked at the Court of cut of swords and wands to see if there's any connection. I don't see anything at this point. Now in the background of the sword suit cup, sword suit court cards, there is a maze um, that they're all kind of in front of or trapped in that I'm gonna look at a little bit more closely too, which is really interesting. Again, the book I shall look through that. So one more suit and then we're almost done. This is gonna be one of my longest videos of all time. So uh, again, the uh, Ace of Pentacles. Again, lots of tree stuff going on um, with this deck. And this looks a little bit reminiscent of the Magician and a couple other cards. So I'm like, it's all right. Um, I, I, I'm a fan of this two of Pentacles because I still think you get the juggling. You still get the oscillating between the two options and trying to make all things work together. To here, I almost get the idea of you have two people who are using pendulums to answer the same question. They're getting different answers. So, just interesting. So, I'm going to put this in the yes file. I am digging this Three of Pentacles. One thing is, I am looking at getting a tattoo. I've just had a big birthday, and I've always said that I wanted to get a, a tattoo, and so I'm, I'm looking at getting something big. And so, of course, I thought about a tarot tattoo. And the idea is that I love these ideas of the Pentacles. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on the hands as they work come on focus as they work together um to pull on on the branch and so yeah i like this yeah this is all over card <laughs> um a little on the nose when it comes to the four pentacles but yeah i, I mean because it's big i mean it's that idea that holding on to something that you really can't hold on to for the sake of holding on to something you, i mean you can't spend that so it's good you get a really interesting uh, five of Pentacles cards. You get basic, the basic Rider Waite Smith idea to it, but I like the fact that there's someone opening the door. The someone who is calling it back, and this is kind of the Good, good Samaritan that you see in the um, Ten of Swords. And so I, I like the sense of hope there. So that's good. Again, Six of Pentacles, pretty standard, so it's serviceable. Um. For me, I have always looked at the Seven of Pentacles as a card of being patient and waiting for the fruits of your labor to come about. I come from a family who three generations back were farmers. So, but in my current profession, I am in restaurants and I've worked around food my entire life. So the idea of waiting for the bread to rise or the loaves to bake is so on the point for me because a lot of times because in a restaurant if you're busy and you need stuff you need now it's like oh we should have made it earlier is it almost ready is it close enough but no you want to wait to the perfect moment to everything's done to all the flavors come together to all the bread rises just right made that everything is perfect and sometimes you want to rush that and you can't rush it to get the great product so this is a great card for me just because the unique take and it hits me it's me more okay eight of pentacles Again, hard work, prudence. Yep, I like it. Uh, this is um, a great Nine of Pentacles. It seems a little reminiscent of RWS, but I like the fact that the woman is a little bit older, and I like that the bird is not on her shoulder, but in her hand, and that she's still in her garden, but she's still tending to the um, the animals and the plants in it. So it's, it's good. So, yeah. So. And, um, Man. Man, oh man, oh man. Um, this card is 
so cool. I, I actually feel like I'm getting a little emotional about it. Um, because one of the Ten of Pentacles is about um, the physical inheritance and it's about what we leave and what we pass on and what we gather and why we gather it. And here what you're seeing is the of symbolic representation of passing on a life's work to our children and to the next generation. And it's just, it's, it's great. The young hand, the old hand. Good, 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 good. Okay. Okay, okay, so back to the court cards. Come on. I, I'm, I'm looking to see if it, if it goes together at all before we move on. Because it looks like it should, but it, it's, it's not gonna. I don't think it's gonna. It's good. It's close. Okay. So, uh, page pentacles. Okay. I think. I think. It's, okay. I'm, I'm, I think the two that are the closest are these two. Looks like there's a little bit of interaction there. So, but I, but it's not identical enough because the mountains don't line up. So, um, I like the nine of pentacles. As uh, steadfast, the Boy Scout. Um, Someone who's ready to go, but not on the go, and having your horse with you, but not you're not astride the horse is, is that image. Queen of Pentacles, ah, oh, my bear. Um, here I, l I like this one. She's good. She's artistic. She's creative. She's got her. Um, she's playing her pinnacle, and so she's she's growing. And I like. Um, I like this guy too. Um, seems a little bit, uh, a little bit of an Asian descent, so you have a little more diversity there. Um, I like the pentacles at his heart, and so that he said, "Where your treasure is, or your heart will be also." Has that it has that feel there, and a solid king of pentacles knows that he is more than his stuff that he is accumulating. He is more than his wealth, and so this is good. So, when we take a look at the point of this video was so, what are the cars? Why am I on the fence of the X? What am I? So it is. It's looking good. It's looking good. So when I look at the deck, I have my three piles, right? So the cards that I love is nearly as big as you can see as the cards that are okay. Yeah, you know, basically like yeah, the other tarot cards don't work. So you kind of see that it's nearly it's nearly the same height. Um, I could count them. I'm going to. So, so that's good. All right. Um, so these are the cards. I love these cards. And what is great is these are the cards that I'm not crazy about. And it's such a thin deck. So I will count these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Less, well, just about 10%. One out of 10. Um, because there's actually 80 cards. So it's exactly one out of 10. If I can do math, math, it's fine. So that's not bad. So when you have, um, you know, 90% of a deck that is good or serviceable. And you just have a couple cards. And so, again, we're looking at, you know, is there something about the cards that, you know, is there something about the image that I don't like? Is it something about the interpretation that I don't like? Or is there something challenging? So we're gonna take just another quick look at these cards. Okay. It's the art here, it's the imagery, and I don't know if it's just me. Please tell me it's not just me. Or tell me I'm just like, I just, I know, no. Um, yeah, no. Okay, um, then the, the rest are all major occurrence. That's interesting. That's interesting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the 21 major arcana cards I'm not crazy about, or I don't like. That's the third. Hmm. Okay, well, the, okay, with the world, it's okay. I just have to get acquainted with it. I think there's some learning there, too. A death, I just, I don't get it. I don't get it. So that's the learning one. Um, after looking through the entire deck again and going through walkthrough, I think I could get behind this one a little bit more because of the perspective thing that's going on. It's just, it, it, will, it will always be a challenge. Again, ten of one, ten of, hi, 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 
high of the 10, the Wheel of Fortune. Um, it's just a little too different. And I'm, and I think it's a little too light seers tarot. Is it the, it's one of the cards. It's either the, the Ace of Pentacles or something that looks very similar to this. That is, it's kind of throwing me off there too. Um, this one I've talked about. Um, again, I think I'm going to come around on this one. And this one is just a preference. On, so that's not too bad. So all in all, I think I'm going to like this deck. Um, so let's give it a quick shuffle and see how it goes. Because that's how we, we turn. There's a smell. I just smelled it. I think it's just paper. And there is a little bit of the bowing going on already. But that's not too bad. Yeah, that's not too bad. Um, it is not super long, which is good. Um, this is one of the only decks I've actually pre-ordered or ordered straight from US Games. Um, the last one was the Urban Tarot, which the cards were so long. Yeah, that's good. Don't worry. Okay. All right. Let's see how it fans out. Yeah, you, you can see the bowing there. Now, honestly, too, oh, but that looks cool. Can you see that? One thing I, I wonder about the deck, because they, right now we're in, um, in kind of a dry spell, and I think the humidity can actually affect cards, because paper, humidity, it's all thing. So I think that are But yeah, no, I think I like it. I like it, I like it, I like it, I like it. It's good. So that was it. That was my initial um, take on the Terror of the Abyss which I'm not 100% certain why it's titled that. So there it is, that's my initial, um, my initial take on the cards of the Terrorist. Hope you liked it. Um, if you made it to the end of this, thank you. Thank you, dear friends. Very few of you do. <laughs> I've seen my stats, but I'm glad you did. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, like, subscribe, I'll see you next time.